think we're good there. Sorry if my mic, sorry if my mic sounds a little bit strange. I'm used to having to use my phone because the microphone I normally use doesn't work with Discord for some reason. Weird. Are you sure you don't want to take a, a minute or two and try and set that up? I've tried it for months and it hasn't worked, so I'm just gonna go with this if it's okay with you. I I have no problem at all. First and foremost, how's your day, man? How's Sunday treating you? Yeah, not bad. You know, just uh, hanging out the last day of the weekend. Right on, Enjoy right some. on. Are you are you like a, a full time Monday to Friday uh worker, and yeah. then weekends mm -hmm. are like yay weekends. Yeah, I get to do the speed runs on the weekends and then working during the week. Right on. So so everyone's saying that there's like a lot of RNG in this game. Does it suck to have your speed runs restricted only within like a day or two? If you get lucky, that's like kind of a suck it up for the rest of the week. Uh, so what, so you get lucky, if you get lucky once, you mean like you're not going to get lucky the rest of the week? Is that what you meant? No, I mean like you only have like, two, like if you can only speed run really on the weekend seriously, you only have two days to, you know, get lucky and get okay. some runs in. And then if you don't get lucky and you don't get runs in, that's like you have to suck it up for the rest of the week and yeah. you have to wait, right? Yeah, that's uh, it's it's pretty frustrating because you know you're only gonna get your one shot at it, and then you know who knows, who knows when you're gonna get uh, another, you know, the RNG to align where you're be able to get a decent run. So it can be pretty frustrating. Yeah, I can I can feel that. I used to have to do that in the in the old days of the Mario Three. Whenever I was working construction, um, I tried so hard. Whenever I come home from work, I try so hard to get like a a bunch of runs in before I have to get up at like five or six in the morning, and it was just it actually intertwined very poorly because i was in like an altercation of what i wanted and what i needed to do right like yeah i gotta work yeah. and pay bills but man i could just sit here and speed run mario 3 all day mm -hmm. so, yeah I, I understand what you were going through it's, it's rough yeah but you know as long as you prioritize i was i was younger at that time i wasn't at the age i'm at now where i would probably uh make better decisions but anyways aside from all of that that's that's not important what's important is mike tyson's punch out so um do you have anything you want to say before we start about this game uh i guess just first off um this run that you guys are about to see i did this in like late june 2016 so this run has been for close to two years now about being beaten um so like 21 months probably and at the time i was the world record you could see the splits on the right side Mm -hmm. Record is 1531. The splits, the, the splits for the 1531, they were really like top loaded. Like, all I got these crazy fast fights for the first half of the run, and every time I would be like 15 seconds behind going into the second half of the game. So I instead used the splits from my old, old world record, 1534. Mm -hmm. And my goal at that time was to get some sort of time under 15 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, and wow. Yeah, I was just trying to, so I was pretty much trying to save, I guess, 12 seconds for 1531. Now, are gold on your splits ideal? Like, when you have a sum of best with all golds, are they are they all real golds? You don't have, like, fake golds or anything like that, right? Right, yeah, Punch-Out, I should, I should probably mention this, Punch-Out is timed with the in-game timer. So you take the time that you get on the fight, and you put it in the live column, and you just compare it for every single fight all the way down. And so, yeah, there's never going to be any, like, inaccuracy with a gold split because you know exactly what it's going to be. All right on. Right on. Okay. Well, um, so I have confirmation that we are going to do this like the Darbian interview. Um, so how many characters total do you go through? Fourteen. Fourteen. So you, um, you want to do um, a play-by-play. -play. Do you want to watch it, then talk about it, or talk about it, then watch it? Uh, I think talking and then watching is probably the best way to do it for this game. Okay, so, um, so we can start off with the first character right now, we can talk about it, and then we can start the video, and then, you know, kind of talk a little bit, yeah, and then, sounds good. then we'll stop it. So, okay, cool. yeah, floor is yours, let us know, tell us the nitty gritty, man, I'm excited. Alright, so, Punch Out starts off with Glass Joe, uh, <laughs> see the world record column on the left, 42.00. And in the live column, you can see from the previous run I had, 42.25. I never get 42.25. Anyone who does serious runs of punch out, it's always 42 flat. Because all you need to do, you chain inputs together in this game. It's called like buffering punches, mm -hmm. where you hold down a you hold down a punch, and then while that punch is going off, you let go of it and then press it again. So then, you know, the next instant that little Mac can throw his next punch, he'll throw it. So you chain those together all the way through the fight. 
and it wastes the exact amount of frames that you need to for for the, your punch that you need at 42 seconds to land and hit him, and he'll stay down. So in the fight that you're about to see for Glass Joe, you're just going to see me punch him in the face. He's going to block pretty much all of them. He's going to back up at 38 seconds. He's going to do his little fist <laughs> shake. He'll come forward. I have two frames to hit him, but because I do this buffer strat, it's free, and every time I'll, I'll hit it, and I'll get 42 flat. So, cool. You guys want me to turn up his it. turn up his volume? I can turn him up. Sure. Hold on a sec. There's 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 some points in your talking where your your audio is just so beautifully, like it's so clear. So the phone's not so bad, but yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So we we got all that. So um, let's go ahead and press play on the same video. So we're gonna do it on go. So three, right. two, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So this this isn't the, okay. Now we, this is the right reset. Mm -hmm. What's the reset time of this game? Like, the reset time, you just press reset, it goes right back to the title screen, and then you're pretty much off fighting Glass Joe right away. Nice, so it's like two, three seconds, beautiful. Yeah. So it's, it's not five minutes is what you're saying. But Glass Joe kind of is a cutscene, because there's you're never going to mess him up, it's just you're punching him in the face over and over, and then he goes down. So there's not too much you have to really focus on for it. And what are we looking for on the timer? You said 38? 38 seconds, he's going to back up, and then... There he is. He bleep, goes, bleep, bleep. And he goes down. So that's that one punch. That's like a one hit KO. Is that is that mm -hmm. set to the boss? Uh yeah. So you have when he backs up like that, you have four frames to hit him. I guess you should probably pause the video like right here. Sure. Um because I need to explain a little bit more. Yeah, um, yeah totally. So you have four frames to hit him to knock him down. The first two will give you 42.00, and the second two frames will give you 42.25. And if you hit him a little bit past those four frames, he'll go down, but he'll get right back up on a count of one. So you you just want to get those first two frames. Yeah, you yeah. You can do it with the buffer strat. Definitely. Not a huge time loss, but someone in your case, what you're looking for is something, something perfect, yeah. right? Yeah, and there's no reason that you can't really get those two frames either because of the buffer strat, so you just might as well do it. Yeah, so I'm going to pause on the next character screen. and it, okay. Oh, you have one right on. Okay, so this is... Von Kaiser. Von Kaiser. Mm -hmm. He is the first fight in the game where there's a little bit of randomness. Okay. Um, so look, there's 14 fights in this game. Uh, let me do count real quick how many of them have RNG in them that... Two, three, four. Yeah, 11 fights. 11 of the 14 fights have RNG elements in them where you'll lose time or gain time just because of luck and the patterns they give you and stuff like that. Oh my goodness. And this is the first one where RNG is going to come into play, but thankfully it's not a huge deal. Your time's not going to vary more than a second or two on him. Not bad, not um, bad. So you're going to see me for the first phase of this fight, like every time I knock him down, before I knock him down, that's called a phase. So phase one is like while I'm hitting him to knock him down the first time. Phase okay. two is when I hit him to knock him down the second time and all the way through. So in phase one, you're just going to see me hit him like all over in the face and the gut, everywhere, <laughs> hit him with a star punch. You can't normally do that. You have to do what's called guard manipulation, where I am start this fight, I'm holding up in B, I'm buffering that input, and then the next input I'm doing is I'm holding A, which is a right gut punch. And while that punch is going off, I have to tap up. I have to let go of A and then tap up. And I have Weird. to do that a couple more times later in the phase. And when you tap up, the character kind of responds to what you're doing, and he'll say, oh, you're trying to punch me in the face. I'll put my gloves up. But I'm actually doing a gut punch, and I'm just pressing up later. So you'll hit him in the stomach over and over again. All oh, right, and on. And I get him down at, like, 21 seconds. And this is, like, again, just another form of manipulation, kind of controlling the outcome. But then you have the, the, the randomness as well, so it's... Yeah, the randomness comes into play in Phase 2. Um, I mean, he gets up, and then you hit him twice in the stomach. You either get two stars or one star. And if you get two stars, you can make Phase 3, like, one second shorter because you oh. can just hit him with the star. Okay. And, uh, so, so I guess we're good. For anyone who doesn't know, do you want to go ahead and explain the stars and the, the hearts? Yeah, so the, uh, the stars... Oh, hold on, hold on. People can't see the stars because of my oh, stupid okay. face. Let me, like, let me, like, move it to where... You go. are in the video. Okay, right there. So the stars, um, you get them. It, it changes for every fighter how you get the stars. You have to just either hit them at a certain time or counter a certain attack at a certain time. 
but even when you're casually playing, you will sometimes get some stars. Okay. And stars are essentially an uppercut. They you press you can only get three of them at a time. You hold start and you'll do an uppercut, and this uppercut takes off like a decent chunk of their health. Um, or sometimes, like you're actually going to see in this fight, it'll take off all of their health, but that doesn't usually happen. And the hearts, they're like your stamina. Okay. So if, if he hits you, he's going to take a few hearts away. If you hit him and he blocks it, it takes one heart away. And it doesn't come into play too often in the speed run because I'm usually going to have all my hearts because I'm not going to get hit that often or yeah. uh, get blocked or anything. But Even if that happens, it'll you know, you'll reset or something. If something's too dangerous, you're just going to reset anyways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, let's let's start this fight. I'm excited. So, 3, right. 2, 1, go. <laughs> this little bobblehead. Yeah. Like Spiders, man. They, they're pretty strange. They designed them kind of strangely, but um that's fun stuff. So, there you go. I'm hitting him in the gut over and over. I get my star. I hit him in the face and that triggers an instant knockdown because they they programmed him in a way that that happens. He gets up on a one count here. A one count in punch out means that a star punch will take him down no matter what. All you need to do is hit him with it. Cool, so, man. I like those. I like down. those. I like those keys that you have. Like you know certain things based on certain things. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's nice. And then I got both stars in phase two. It was a 50-50 chance I got either one or two. I got two, so I could just use the star in phase three, and then Von Kaiser's done. Right on. Now at this point in the run, you're not like, oh yay, like like you're not your your heart rate's no. not up. You're not nervous. Not at all. You're still in a high yeah. reset rate anyways, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, cool. So it, this isn't anything for you to specific, like that one second time save right there. That's not like, oh my God, to earn, to earn, right? Like it's mm -hmm. nothing, it's nothing crazy. No, definitely not. It's just uh, a ni nice little start, but it doesn't matter. You'll, you'll see later how it, like he's completely irrelevant, essentially. Yeah, how it changes and stuff like that. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So next, who do we have now? Piston Honda 1. Piston Hondo 1. Never heard, heard of him. him. twice. So he is the, the Japanese stereotype of the game. Um, he is kind of different from every fight that came before him because you could get stars like really easily on him. Okay. And I remember how I used the, what did I call it, guard manipulation on Von Kaiser. Yeah, where you You're press up, that. right, and you trick him? Mm -hmm. So here, to open the fight, you press up. That moves his guard up, and then before he has a chance to lower it back down, you're hitting him in the gut three times to get three stars, and all three of those stars are guaranteed. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So you, you use them, and you use them, and then you hit him a few more times, and he there's a little bit of randomness. Like, if he gives a weird pattern, he can, you know, block you or uppercut you even, and I'll just reset if that happens, but uh, he didn't do that in this run, so... Your, your time in this fight, it can range between, like, 44 seconds or up to, like, 50 or 51, depending on, you know, a few things. Is Would you say that this is the biggest component of RNG in the run so far? Uh, yes. But the first three fights, Piston Honda it has the most randomness, okay. for sure. Okay, yeah. Well, at least the most time-costly uh, randomness, right? Yeah, uh, but also just the most randomness, too, because there's, like... I I don't think I've even seen all the different things Honda can do in phase one. He like he can like bust out these random uppercuts that he only does like once in every few hundred times you fight him. Like it's it's really weird. Weird, yeah, that is weird. Them, but, mm -hmm. That is weird. Does so does right. do you think he just has cycling patterns constantly and that's why it's so long for you to actually see them? Because yeah. like is it frame dependent on when you enter the battle which determines like certain things that he's going to do or is it your inputs alone that will change it so the way randomness works in this game is starting from power on the game is detecting you know from every single frame what your inputs are so it starts out from power on all the way to wherever you are in that point and mm -hmm. based on what input you what inputs you're pressing on every single frame it'll give you some random value for that fighter at okay. for that one attack of that fighter and then you know the next attack that'll be counting every single frame from power on up until that attack and it goes like that all the way through the game so there's no way to really control it you just need to hope that it works out in your favor oh yeah and, yeah you know. the prey to and jesus all right let's get this three two one go all right so would you say that there's really really long battles and then really really short battles like once you get closer to the end do they get longer because they're more powerful 
Yeah, they do. Uh, the first six fights like always go down under a minute. Well, I shouldn't say always go down, but in a speed run, they always go down under a minute. Um, and then you can see like in the back half of the game, most of the fights are over a minute or over two minutes. Look at that fight, man. That was awesome. You got your three guaranteed stars, then you did your uppercut. One count. Do that one count, so yeah. I just get one star and then hit him with it. That's it right. Fun. So so that one count actually applies like every time. I thought maybe it was just mm -hmm. to that battle. So that was a two count, but he doesn't have much. Yeah, two count. It, he gives you a random refill in phase three, like how much health he gets up with. Two count can be either the good or the bad refill. And I got the bad refill in this run. It cost like two or three seconds. Yeah, because so it looked like his good. health refilled almost as much as it was for phase two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So this is so you just did the first section, yeah. First, yeah, they're, they're called circuits. So there's the minor circuit, which is the first three fights. Okay. And the next four fights, the major circuit, the last, or no, the next six are called the world circuit. And then Mike Tyson's kind of his own little circuit thing. Cool. Now, is Mike Tyson actually in the game? I thought it was just a code to fight Mike yeah. Tyson. Yeah, he's in the game. He's after Super Macho Man. He's the last last fighter. Okay, cool. So this cutscene, it. It kind of it's a big turning point in the run because the RNG is about to get kicked up another huge notch um, after this next fighter, Don Flamenco One. Don Flamenco One is actually the fastest fight in the game by a large margin. Well, it looks um, like 15 seconds it shows, right? Yeah, it's always 14 or 15 seconds. Wow, that's and, fast. And the way this fight works, I uh, remember the buffer the buffer that I talked about on Glass Joe. Mm -hmm. So. There's something similar for Don Flamenco 1. You can get a star punch on Don Flamenco 1 if you hit him. Like, you'll hit him, he'll counter, you dodge his counter, and then if you wait until the last frame before he would block that punch, then you'll get a star from it. So you have a 60th of a second to time the star. Single frame and, star. Yep. You know, and for, for a few years, people just tried to time it manually because nobody really knew about buffer strats, but... Then Zallard won. You've probably heard of him. He's done like the blindfolded punch out stuff. Yep. He figured out you could buffer a gut punch and then buffer a left dodge, then buffer a left quick dodge, which is when you press left and up, and then buffer a face punch. So you chain those four inputs together and you'll get a star. It'll hit him on the exact frame that you need to. I love when that stuff comes together in speedruns. That's mm -hmm. so awesome. Were you yeah. a part of speedrunning this game at that time? No, I think I think Salard figured that out in maybe early 2013. Wow. And I didn't really start running punch out till like mid 2015. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, there's there I was kind of late to this game. Like the the old runners were like Sinister One. Sinister One was the only guy who ran this game for a really long time. I remember and Sinister then, One definitely, yep. Yeah, then there were a couple other guys uh, who did it. Salard One did it and then uh, Ouija Wee, who's in the chat right now, I think. He was running it, and then I just kind of came along after they did. Kind of clean up the mess, sweep in with the good RNG, come in. Yeah, and... I got old luck. No, this this game is uh, equal equal with luck and skill, would you say? I think it used to be about equal with luck and skill, but we're at, you'll, you'll see this later once I start explaining some of the later fights. But I think we're at the point where you're just kind of expected to execute perfectly and you just need the luck to also line up or else so i think it's more maybe more heavily weighted towards rng at this point uh when you're trying to achieve the times that you guys are going for of course if, you, if you're trying to get yeah. a 25 minute speed run i mean you mm -hmm. wouldn't even really have to worry about rng at all right yeah it's like any percent worthless where everyone's kind of afraid of the rng in it and they're like oh i don't want to run that there's so much rng when in reality, RNG hardly matters until you're going for a time within like a minute or two of the world record. Exactly, exactly, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's exactly right. Okay, well, let's uh, <laughs> let's watch this 15, 14 second fight. All right, three, two, one, go. Look at him coming in. This is a little dance every time. <laughs> Woo, that uppercut. Mm -hmm. Right on. You're actually going to see that uppercut, too, in a minute. He doesn't just do it for show. Okay, so... There it is. That was the chain right there? Yep, those four those four punches. The punch, the dodge, the quick dodge, and the, the face punch. So you got a two count. Gets up with almost no health every time. The refill is not random at all here. 
Cool. And he goes back down. And most fighters need to TKO them, which is three knockdowns in a round. But Don 2 actually gets knocked out. Or no, sorry, Don 1. This is Don 1. Yep. Don Flamenco 1. He gets knocked out after only two knockdowns if you do it fast enough. See you later. So you got yeah. it. So you're... Okay, so at this point in the run, are you still like, eh, normal run? Like, like that line on your splits right there, is that the, like seriousness of your run or is that the start of the next circuit uh so you see how it says uh before like before that line you see how it says reset on uh, the next fight i'm about to do yep that's because 80 percent of the speed runs that make it to this point get reset by this fighter king hippo um <sighs> the run up to this point i like i did the first four fights i'm a little bit ahead of that of the splits I'm up against, but this was actually a below average first four fights. I got kind of bad luck on Honda one. He gave ah. like the bad refill and a couple other. Yeah, he times. did. Yeah, you got the two count, and then his health was like halfway, right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, to quick touch up on that, do you have to improvise at that point? Like you, you know, you have your two different variations of health refills on on a two count. Like, do you have to, or do you already have 100% set up for there and 100% set up for the other way? Yeah, it's all set up. It's actually the same pattern that you, you you throw the same punches regardless of the refill for Piston Honda one, but you stop before the last start punch if you get the the low refill. Okay, okay, okay. Right on. All right, oh, well I let's see. let's uh, real quick. Someone's saying in chat. Uh, I should mention how the milliseconds are at set intervals. Do sure. you see like the splits on the left? You, there's like a bunch of point nine sevens and a bunch of point two fives, a bunch of point zero zeros. Uh, you can't actually get any milliseconds. It, you can only get times that end in 0 .00, 0 .25, 0 .48, 0 .61, 0 .82, 0 .97, or 0 .99. That's weirdly uh, all specific. The other ones don't, yeah, the other ones don't even exist. They, they only wrote those seven decimals in, so you always get one of those. Cool. Hey, wait, is that actually bad or good, or does that not really matter? I mean, you just abide by the way the game works, right? Yeah, pretty much. It yeah. doesn't end up changing your time all that much. He got a point six. He got a point. You know what I mean? It's like it's not going to be yeah. a huge debate or anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you make you make it seem like this guy is really really lame because oh, he of is. that reset value. Okay. So let's hear. But to me, to my knowledge, I thought this was the easiest of them all. You belly punch him, drops his underpants. You get like a free kill. Yeah. In terms of uh, skill needed for this fight, it's not that bad. You just hit him in the face. If you hit him early enough, you're able to hit him an extra time. Mm -hmm. uh, which is the only really tough part of the speed round. But the random element and the way King Hippo works is that he he will throw a punch like every every like three seconds or so he throws a punch, okay? Mm -hmm. And he has a three eighths chance of opening his mouth on that punch. And in order to hit him, he needs to open his mouth. And he mm -hmm. needs to open his mouth three times in order for you to hit him enough to send him down for the knockout. So what that means is that if he opens his mouth three times in a row, just this, his first three punches are all punches where he opens his mouth, then he'll go down in 37 seconds or 38 seconds, and that's going to be an incredible fight. But the odds in that happening are three-eighths times three-eighths times three-eighths, which works out to about one in 20. Oh my god, that's worse than the hands. Yeah, it's horrible. Ouch. But then you, there's also, you know, there's different variants. You don't just reset if you get anything above 38. You know, if he, if he opens three out of the first four times, you're going to get like 40 or 41. And, you know, that's fine to continue with. That's like another 10% chance. Then, you know, three out of the first five times, that's not too horrible. Three out of the first six times is about the upper limit of what you'd want to continue with. And anything worse than that, you do what it says in the live column and you reset. Yeah. That's insane. So, that's yeah. that's crazy. So is that is that all you really want to touch up on with this guy? Is there is there any manipulations that you do yourself during the battle? Uh, no, there's no guard manipulation, and there's no like the pattern you do is always the same. You just hit him in the face as soon as he throws a punch, and you hope that his mouth is open for it. All right. Well, I'm excited. Thank you for not spoiling it either. You kind of spoke as if like these are what can happen. Let's find mm -hmm. out and see. So let's go yeah. with that. Three, two, one. Go. Wow. There's the, he's showing you, right? That's like the game showing yep. you punch with his mouth open. <laughs> he's showing you this is what I'm not going to do the whole fight. So he opened his mouth there. Mm-hmm. First one was an open. Second one was an open. 
So that's three eighths times three eighths. Then oh. a block and an open. So that was really, really good RNG. Yeah, that's. Uh, I actually made a chart that like shows what the exact values were for each time, and I, I, I figured it out like a few weeks ago. Um, I think you have like a fifteen percent chance of getting a forty or less or forty one or less. So that was fantastic luck. That was some great luck. It looked like. So you split mm -hmm. after the running. Oh no, you haven't split yet. Right, I have to wait to see what the time is. Um, so forty point nine nine. I see what it is. I put it in the splits like while the next fight is kind of loading up, and uh, I guess how far ahead would I be? I guess like eight seconds ahead, right? Something like that. If you were what forty forty one. Yeah, I got a 40, so I gained 8 seconds, so I'm like a little bit more than 8 seconds ahead <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so now you're, now you're kind of nervous. Now you're kind of like, okay, this game never gives me this luck. All right. I'm actually not at all nervous at this point because... Look at this baller, that, man. He doesn't even as care. As that fight is, there's like 3 or 4 more fights after this that can kill a run just as easily just from getting bad luck. Dang, so... So, kind of like Warpless, don't get attached to the run until, like, eight World 8 Tank 2 or, or Bowser's Castle. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. Stressful. Okay. So, like this getting, guy. Getting that 40 is, like, the equivalent of, like, a 4-death early hammer or something like that. Where it's like, okay, this, is, this has a little potential. It's nothing great. We're going to have to see how it turns out. Yeah. Agreed. Is the music box going to be in my way when I screen scroll? I, right. He better not be. <laughs> So this guy. So what's going on with this guy? Great Tiger is the opposite of King Hippo because King Hippo is almost all RNG based and Great Tiger is almost all skill based. Right on. All you have to do, he's going to do the same exact pattern every time. You just need to hit him in the gut. You have a six frame window to hit him in the gut to get a star. You kind of do that over and over. You throw the stars at certain times and then he's going to get up on a one count. So you use a star. And then he's going to get up on another one count, and you use the star, and he's done in 48 seconds every time. Cool. Right on. So, like, you're not even thinking about this fight right now. You're like, okay, so whenever I get to blah, 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 blah. Like, this is one of those fights where you, you know you have the ability to pretty much consistently kill him the way you need to kill him, right? Yeah. Do you, do, when you're playing Mario 3, do you ever, like, do a level, and then after you finish the level, you realize, was I even, like, looking at the screen for that level? Like, I wasn't even paying attention to anything I was doing. Oh, yeah, that, that happens all the time. Like, I'm not, um, what, my mind, it's like, uh, your hands just, like, kind of take over, right? Like, you're, you're not mm -hmm. really paying attention to what you're do doing. Right. You've just done it for so long. That's what Great Tiger is almost every time you fight him in a speedrun. Yeah. So you, you, your muscle memory just kind of takes over, and you just mm -hmm. kind of get it done. Right on. Yeah. I, I like I like when these RNG games and our, these RNG runs have those split times where it's just it's just pure skill. It's just your ability to just, like, roll right through it. Kind of like World 7. Minus, mm -hmm. minus 7, 1, and 7, 9. Like, I like that because it's just, like, I can just go through it the way that I know I can go through it, right? So right. stuff like this mm -hmm. is, is really fun. So let's, let's take a look at this fight. All right, three, two, one, go. It's coming in. Yeah. He doesn't have any special opening. He just walks right in. Right on. He's ready. So here's the six frame punches. That's the first one. That's the second one. And then one more. You hit him with a couple of stars. One more of them. Yeah, one more star from his uh, turban flashing. And then one more star and he goes down. Right on. And so you said he gets, count. yeah, you said he gets a one count every time as long as you fight him like that, right? Yeah, and as long as you have full health too, which you'd always have in a speed run of Great Tiger. Because mm -hmm. he's a he's a great joke. That's what he is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Boom. He used up your last star perfectly, and then that's yeah. it. Yeah, you intentionally save two stars after phase one for the last two phases. Right on. So this is the end of the next circuit. No, there's one more fight. Uh, before the major circuit's done. It's a title bout. This is Nappa, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I just call him Nappa because he looks like Nappa from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, okay, wait. Okay. One thing I need to mention. You're going to need to skip ahead to like 7.38 or so because I was I streamed this on Twitch and I was like, I didn't have a microphone back then so I was just typing to the chat about something. So 
Yeah. Well, what what happened? You were like waiting on that menu screen. You yeah. don't. Your splits aren't like live split where it's like a timer constantly running, right? Yours is exactly. Okay. It's... Cool. So I, I just I could type in the time whenever I want, and I could start the next fight whenever I want. It's, okay. it's pretty. It's nice for chat interaction. Oh, so you don't have to start the battle right away. That's right. So you just sat there, you were typing and having a good time. Mm hmm Just waiting. So you did that by choice, right? There was there was no reason to actually sit there and wait. Right. You can't manipulate the RNG by like waiting a certain amount of time. So. And why why is possible. that? Well, like I said before, every frame from power on, it's looking at your inputs. And unless you can control your input on every frame of the game from power yeah. on, no okay. matter what you do, you can't. So while you're waiting on that screen, in it, like avoiding starting the next fight using inputs on the D-pad, will they not be registered and saved? Uh, sorry, can you say that again? I didn't quite get it. Um, well, you said uh, from power on based on your inputs, right? So you can apply inputs uh -huh. on that menu screen without starting the next battle. Will that affect? Oh, yeah. Uh, any Yeah, anything from the whole game. Depend doesn't matter if they're like, the fight hasn't started yet, in the middle of the fight, you know, between rounds, it doesn't matter. So when you were sitting it. there on the screen waiting, you were you made sure you didn't press anything other than start or whatever the button is to get to the next battle because you wanted your previous inputs saved? No, you can't control it. It's okay. unless you can control every single frame. Like you would need to say, okay, I'll hold the B button starting on frame one thousand nine hundred seventy three from power <laughs> on, and then I'll let go on exactly frame one hundred one thousand nine hundred eighty four. Yeah, like, it's impossible to do the I whole way it. through. So you can't do much. You can press whatever buttons you want whenever you want, and it'll. Mm -hmm. I hope. you know I I gotta ask these questions so that you can answer them so that they're officially yeah. in the interview. Do you, do you get a lot of people when you play this and stream it about? The controlling is it as is it as annoying as like with Mario three? I uh, I mean it's not that bad really. It's I know I'm I'm, I'm trying to bait him. I'm trying to debate him here. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, you know I'm I'm happy to answer like whatever you know. It does it's not it's not it's not that complicated to explain. So I'm cool no. with it. But anyway, um, yeah. oh yeah, someone said what software is this? It's uh for the splits on the right. I'm just using a Google Sheet. So Right on. Cool. Anyway, I'm ready All to right. go whenever you are. So, well, this guy in particular. Oh, yeah. I, see. I completely forgot about that. So, Bald Bull, he is a mixture, I would call him a mixture of King Hippo and Great Tiger, where uh, there's a lot of execution going on here, but there's also a lot of randomness. Um, okay. Uh, if you get literally flawless luck, like, everywhere, um, and you get, like, good refill which i'll explain what that is in a minute but like a good refill a good rolling jab pattern another good rolling jab pattern a lucky star which is like one in 128 or something insane like that you'll get a time like 101 or 102 if what? you get all horrible luck you'll get a time around 111 or 112 and like an average fight is like a good 106 or 107 okay so 111 isn't you know well my life's over bad right right Right, yeah. it's not that bad, um, but you know, I you'd you'd rather you'd rather get something faster because I'm like I'm on a pretty good pace here. I'm eight seconds ahead, but if I lose half that time to one fight, which where there's not even that much RNG in the fight compared to like what's coming up, yeah, then it, it's gonna suck. I'm scared for what's coming up. You keep talking about the storm, uh -huh, the eye yeah, of the storm. Like what's coming up? This is scary. Yeah, but. Uh, Okay, so bowl one, the first phase of this fight, the nice thing about it is that you're going to knock him down at 17 seconds every time, 100% of the time. You're like, no one's ever going to mess it up. He uh, he throws rolling jabs, which are when he kind of like rolls his fists together and then like throws a punch. And while he's throwing that punch, you can hit him in the face to get a star. And you can also hit him with the star while he's doing a rolling jab. And that star punch will do more damage than a normal star punch does. So you do that over and over for the first phase of the fight, and he Damn. goes down at 17 seconds. That's insane, though. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's not, it's not. People get this idea after watching phase one, they're like, "Oh, dude, this fight's gonna be a pushover." But after that, in phase two, the first two punches of the fight, it's like Von Kaiser, where. Yeah. I think I mentioned you needed like you could get either one star or two stars, and that depends how you play it later. Um, it's fifty fifty shot getting either one or two stars. Then there's a pattern he can do where he does either rolling jabs or hooks, 
he does more rolling jabs where he like rolls his fists together and throws them like at the start of the fight or he can throw hooks and then phase three he can give you a small refill which is 25 percent chance or a big refill which is 75 percent chance and he can also do rolling jabs or hooks there and obviously you want the small refill right small refill is ideal yeah all right well let's find out what happens okay all right I'm nervous right now because this time's yeah. important. This 8.98. That's like if you if you play the know you way like the way you know you can play and like get the luck you know you can get. These are mm -hmm. these are what defines like is the world record ideally achievable or is it not? Right. Most world right. records are achievable. I mean anyone like point point zero one you beat it. That's all you need technically, right? But right. in in these instances when you get these luck you know what the other person has to go through. Like if I get one death early hammer, no hands, 50-20. Uh, I know what somebody else is going to have to go through. So, like, mm -hmm. that's why I'm, like, nervous for these runs while watching it. Because you, you're, you've you saved, to me, so much time just by watching it, right? And this yeah. game has been speedrun for so long, right? So, to see these times, it was getting, I'm just shaking. <laughs> and uh, also, nervous. you got to keep in mind, too, I wasn't trying to beat this record by, like, a hundredth of a second. I was really trying for a sub-15-20, and... Like, you could see I was, like, nine seconds ahead, so you could see maybe that's, like, attainable. But, uh... Yep. Yeah, All right. you'll, you'll see. <laughs> All right. So, three, two, one, go. All right, he's coming in. Gets right down to business. Yeah. You can go ahead and commentate a little bit while the fight's going on, too. I don't mind that. Okay. So, I'm, I'm doing the rolling jab punches, where he's, he's throwing the rolling jabs. I'm hitting him in the face to get the star. He's going down right away, 17 seconds. Peace. But the problem with Ball's Bowl is he stops doing that pattern after 20 seconds. So I'm going to get two more punches in here before 20, right? So that's one. That's two. I'll hit him with a star. Get another star, hit him with it. Right here, he did the rolling jabs pattern again. That's only 25% likely to happen. That's so good. It is. I feel like 45 seconds. That's great. That's like as fast as that could be. And I have three stars to use here in phase three. <laughs> so he gets up on a three count. That's 50-50 shot for good or bad refill. He gets up. That's the good refill. So I use one star. I use two stars. He stands still. That means he's going into rolling jabs again. He goes down at 102. Wow. That rolling jab again is another 25% chance, right? Yeah. He did the 25% chance twice. So that's what? One in eight. And then he gave me the good refill. That's one in what are we up to now? One no, sorry, I'm bad at math. One in one in four times one in four times one in four because he did two rolling jabs patterns and then the good refill. Oh so that's one in sixty four. I also got the lucky star at the start of phase two that pushes it to one in one hundred twenty eight. And you got the amazing hippo too. So your art. So yeah. this game is just like today's the day. Here you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. The the crazy thing about what's happening here is that you you de you do need to have the skill to back up these times though, right? If you were a bad player, these RNG components aren't gonna be helping you that much. Yeah, um the the world record splits on the left there and the splits in the middle, I executed perfectly in both of them. Um the fourteen seconds that I'm ahead, it's strictly because of getting better luck on King Hippo and Bald Bull. Okay, so let's just take a quick look here. I got my cursor over the splits here. So you got world record on the left side tied for the first two then then you can see like your times ahead now your minus times are based on from the world record right right overall from the world record how much i'm ahead cool and you're and as we see from the top you're very close to the world record you're very close i okay so i actually did have I, both of those times 1531 and 1534 were mine 1531 i didn't use those splits because they had like a crazy fast start and i didn't want to try to go up against them Mm -hmm. um so i just used the 1534 splits and uh yeah i was 14 i jumped out to this huge lead against them here that's so crazy we have we have uh title discrepancies here S uh, summing summing salt is the name of my title oh god <laughs> come on Mitch. come on i know i'm sorry don't worry the the title's updated we got we got the backup okay so um you got like I like I like seeing times like this where you got the fifteen fifteen same time the forty two forty two but then like you can see um, forty nine twenty five like you were explaining before you can only get variances of the decimal decimal mm -hmm. time that's so cool to like I like the numbers to to yeah. speed running as well sometimes like I like going through the numbers not actually watching videos entirely but like going through like the math side of it 
very interesting. And one of the great one of the great things about Punch Out is that it's so easy to tell like where you're gaining time and not because like with most splits, it's like you don't you you see the individual split, but it's like added up across the whole run. Where here you could see directly, oh, there I got forty eight instead of forty, or there I got one hundred two instead of one hundred seven. So you could like directly see where the time saves coming from yeah. really easily. But the timer in the actual game, like where it says round one in that timer, that is not second to second, is it? Uh, what do you mean? Like it's not one second per one second, right? It seems like no, it's they're... like one second per like point. I don't know six. It looks like the timer in Punch Out is actually really really complicated. It's usually twenty frames for a second, but that changes depending on which fighter you're facing oh and what God. round you're in. Of course, Nintendo. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. But overall, that doesn't actually really affect anyone or do anything. You just abide by what the game is giving you, and then you yep. you you either rewatch your your fight, and you know you just figure out, oh, where did I lose the time? At least you got the in-game yeah. timer. Okay, cool. Yeah. You just have to kind of deal with the crazy rules that Punch Out gives you, and just go with them. Yeah. A lot. A lot of that is like like most games, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. things are gonna happen and things are gonna happen you know all right so this right. fighter we're, we're we're lapping the fighters yeah piston honda we're fighting him again the second time um he this piston honda too there's like too much for me to explain everything in this fight it's probably the most technical fight in the whole game oh wow um, technical so skill wise whole... or technical skill rng or uh, just in terms of what you have to do in, in terms of rng it's actually not that bad but it, you're kind of throwing his guard all over the place, and you're doing this thing called max damage star punches. So I'm going to quickly explain what that is. Yeah, um, do it, do it, do it. So star punches in this game, the, the fighters are all programmed to dodge star punches after a certain amount of them that you throw. And I think for Piston Honda 2, after your third or fourth star punch... Um, he's just gonna dodge all of them. And that makes it very. Them. That makes it incredibly difficult, right? Right. That makes it so that because star punches, that's how you do all your damage. Mm -hmm. So, that's a bit of a problem because uh, you're gonna use your star punch. You're gonna use a bunch of them here in phase one, which you're gonna see in a minute here. In phase two, if I were to try to just throw star punches, he would dodge them. But they also programmed this thing called a max damage star punch in Mike Tyson's Punch Out against certain fighters where. If you, like, after he's just standing there doing nothing, mm -hmm. if you wait exactly, uh, I'm trying to think of the right number, I think if you wait, like, five frames and then tap up in A, or no, up in start on the controller, so you're throwing a start punch and bringing his guard up, mm -hmm. and then you let go of up and start, on, like, within, like, a four-frame window, not only is he going to get hit by that star, but that star punch is going to do more damage than a normal star punch does. I don't know why they programmed that into the game. Like no, no one would accidentally do that. Well, it but... seems like it seems like the the designers were like, "Listen, we're going to put his star guard or whatever it's called up super fast, right? Because you can only get a couple star punches in before he starts dodging them." And then mm -hmm. then they're like, "But we'll give you this like little mini trinket thing that no one's ever going to really do." uh-huh right but it seems like I, you guys there's three fights you can do that on in a speed run piston honda one piston honda two and then super macho man who's like at the end of the game um and this is the fight where we didn't really know if we could even do max damage star punches for a long time um but then like a few months before this run i found something that made the max damage star punch viable which is i do a quick dodge which is left and up and that wastes the exact amount of frames that you need to for you to throw that star punch like in the first place remember i said you have to wait a few frames before you throw it that's yep. that that little quick dodge that wastes the exact amount of frames that you need to throw that punch. so it seems like you used old tech that was new at the time to waste those perfect amount of inputs to get what you want you and you applied mm -hmm. that to somewhere else in the fight Right. You you, pl you apply that in phase two. That's where you do the max damage star punches. And Which then, was so never used before. On, all you need to focus on after that, after the star punch goes off, is you have a four frame window to let go of up for the punch to land. Which is, it sounds difficult, but that's, compared to a one frame, four frames not that bad. Yeah, it's, I, like, every now and then I'll mess it up, but it's really yeah. not that horrible. 
And uh, also phase one, I'm just like, you're going to see me hit him in the gut and the face over and over, like relentlessly. You can't normally do that. That's guard manipulation again. Cool. So ready Very to go exciting. here. But still, nonetheless, when I look at the splits, quick fight though, 47.99. It is, it's, it's, he gets up on a one count in phase three, and uh, he actually doesn't throw a punch at you the whole fight. So <laughs> He's just, he's tired, man. He's having a bad time. You beat him mm -hmm. last time, and he's not ready. His trainer's mad at him. You know, he's, he's nervous. Exactly. He's under pressure. Mm -hmm. All right. Three, two, one, go. Oh, he's got mad eyebrows this time. Did he do the eyebrow mm -hmm. thing last time? Yeah, he did. I must have missed it. He's got tiny feet for such a big dude. Once he gets knocked down, his feet grow like they double in size. It's strange. but So here's the guard manipulation, tapping him up, hitting him in the gut, just doing a bunch of crazy stuff, and then he goes down at 27 seconds. And his feet grow. You see how big they are now? They're huge, yeah. They're bigger than Mario. <laughs> All right. Also, he has either a good or a bad refill here. Um, it's a 50-50 shot. I got the bad refill. It doesn't really matter that much. Um... Those, those are the max damage star punches that you just saw. Yep. He's going to get up on a one count, and you know what that means. Yep, and you have one star left. Uh, one star, so I do one more max damage star because he would dodge it normally. And he goes down. That is a big time save because he's dodging your star punches, gets up on a one count, so you you need a star punch to, yeah. to really just knock him out super fast. And without your manipulation, it wouldn't you wouldn't have been able to do that, right? Correct. Uh, we had an old strategy where you like you hit him while he was doing this eyebrow pattern, which he never even does in this fight because I'm beating him so fast. But you used to beat him in like 55 or 56 seconds instead of 45 seconds. So it, yeah. it was like a solid 10 second save. Insane. Yeah, there's a little controversy we got going on in chat. The glass joke can be done faster than 42. On the PAL version of Mr. Dream's Punch-Out, which is the same. In North America, Mr. Dream's Punch-Out and Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is the same game, except like it's Mike Tyson instead of Mr. Dream at the end. It's just like a sprite swap. Okay. Um, for the PAL regions of the game, for whatever reason, they made the game like different. Like they're, I don't know if it's like the timer's different or what the deal is, but they're actually like completely different games. And Weird. the PAL version of Mr. Dream's Punch-Out for Glass Joe, you can actually beat him in 41.97 seconds. So that's weird. Yeah, that's... people people always ask, can you beat Glass Joe in under forty two seconds? And uh Is everything relatively the same though? Like is PAL the faster version? I'm actually not sure because like nobody runs punch out PAL. I yeah. think if MPAP's still here, did he did like a task of it at some point. But yeah. Alright, well next fighter. We'll wait for his answer, we'll keep an eye on chat. Next fighter though. So, Sotopopinski is his name. Uh, he was originally Vodka Drunkinski in the arcade version. Um, <laughs> everyone likes when they point that out. Uh, he is King Hippo number two, essentially. The so way King Hippo's out, he, that's it. He couldn't handle a refight. Everyone else can but him. I guess not, man. I guess not. Right on. Okay. Well, anyways, so, Mr. Cone. Sotopopinski. Yeah. Um, the way he works, it's actually a fairly simple fight. You just need to get lucky. He's going to start the fight with, like, a couple punches that you intercept to get stars. And then you're going to see me duck. And I'll, I'll explain that in a second. Okay. But after, after I duck, he either throws more uppercuts. Or no, he either throws more hooks, because he threw hooks to start the fight. He either throws more hooks, which is, like, a 25% chance. Or he throws more uppercuts, which is a 75% chance. And he can delay either zero seconds or up to four seconds before throwing these hooks or uppercuts. But it doesn't matter 75 or 20. Like, that randomness doesn't matter, right? I mean... It does matter. Okay. Big time. Because... Hooks the reason are longer? I'm, the reason I'm ducking is because I think they programmed this into the game, or it might have been a glitch. I'm not entirely sure. But if you're ducking and... Soda Popinski ducks down to throw his uppercut, he stays frozen. And when he stays frozen like that, not only can you hit him for a star, but he also, something weird happens in his code, and he's triggered to get knocked down to a, a single star punch if you do that. Right on. So you're banking on him going to his uppercut pattern. But you have a 75% um, chance to have that happen, right? Something like 75% chance. So a like, good chance. It's, it's, it's a good chance, but you need it to happen three times in a row, right? 
That's the thing, because he needs of to do course. it in phase one, phase two, and phase three. And he can delay before these uppercuts too. And if he delays, you know, like the maximum time every single time, that's like a one oh one oh two versus like if he didn't delay at all, it's like a fifty one. And if if he throws like a single hook that seven seconds or so. So if he throws a, like a hook with any sort of delay before it, your run is essentially completely dead. Yeah, because you're just losing so much time. Mm -hmm. It's just taking it's... so long. Even though you have those uh, RNG um, in your favor, that like you can't apply that concept because if you did, then everything you wouldn't be 16 seconds ahead because you had such low RNG factors come into play throughout this entire run. So are you still like? Come on, man! Give me the seventy-five, please. Give me the seventy-fives, right? I, if you think like if you if you're like praying to Soda, hey, dude, he's essentially going to do the opposite. So <laughs> you just want to go into it with a blank mind and just let him do what he wants to do. Okay. Um, now and yeah. also, go ahead. The world record on the left, it's a fifty-two. I'm going up against. All right. That means that he did like one little delay, and everything else was like no delays and uppercuts immediately. And I'm expecting to lose. Like, I would be satisfied if I lost here. I would be like, all right, that's a pretty good fight if I get a 57. Okay, so that's that's not bad. So, so you want to still at least be 10 seconds ahead after this. You're fine with that. I'm, I, I'm, I wouldn't reset if I, unless I lost, like, my entire lead here. I would probably just try to keep going, but the run would kind of suck at that point. So I'm I'm looking I'm thinking okay just don't like don't throw a hook here don't excessively delay just give me something reasonable exactly all which personally from your run I would say that is actually a lot to ask because you've been mm -hmm. getting so lucky this entire run yeah so to it's, be like come on man just just be just be yeah. reasonable it's, I'm not thinking give me the god I'm just thinking don't give me the godly bad luck you of know, course. Just, something reasonable here and and according to the splits here world record is 51 31 splits are 15 34 you know you're killing the world record right have you ever had the world record in this game before this point yeah i had the previous four records for uh before 15 12 okay okay all right so but i'm excited for this battle then i'm excited yeah it's it'll be interesting you'll you will see what'll happen all right, three, two, one, go. So yeah, he kind of like shakes his whole body. <laughs>, <laughs> oh, it laughs at you too. Yeah, he's not going to be laughing long. So immediately goes down for the uppercut. That yep. was best possible luck for phase one. Yeah, right, so I saw that. So I, and now I'm like, oh, fantastic, cool. But if he throws a single hook, it doesn't matter. The run's probably like over. So, phase two. Uppercut. 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 Oh, 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 my gosh. So now I'm thinking, no, this is not going to happen. There's no way. This is when the hook comes. This is when the delay comes. Oh, and then you got it. Wow. Yeah. 51. I actually gained time in this fight. Oh my god. So okay, now you're crapping your pants, right? Now Yeah. Now I, you're like I this. remember typing in chat at this point, if this run makes it to Tyson, I'm going to be way too nervous to fight Tyson. Like there's I'm just going to be too nervous. I, and I've we don't we don't know why though. So we don't know right. what's up with Tyson. So that's actually exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um <laughs> fifth, I think I had been on this pace like a couple times before, but the way this run worked out like the third fight where I got a 49.97 on Piston Honda, mm -hmm. I sometime, that fight's sometimes a bit faster. So when I was on this pace before, I would usually get like maybe a 46 on Honda 1, and then instead like, like a 54 on Soda or a 105 on Bull 1, something like that. Instead of like, boom, 40 on Hippo, 102 Bull, 51 Soda, like all in succession like that. So that just kind of made it feel even more nerve-wracking. That's insane. Uh, have you ever been on this pace before? Uh, yeah, like very close to it, but only like a couple of times, I would say. Okay. And how many attempts would you say that you've done? Oh, were you talking like since I got this run or before this run? No, just in uh, in all time. Uh, yeah, since since I've done since I got this run, I've done 
a ton more attempts to this game. Like in the past, in the past like few months, I've gone pretty hard into this game, and I've gotten runs even ahead of this pace before, but not by more than a couple of seconds. Crazy, crazy. All right, well, one twenty-eight. This is a oh my gosh, and then the two twenty. Okay, so one twenty-eight. What's yeah, this, this is the slowest fight in the run up to this point. Mm -hmm. um, there's actually not too much to explain about this fight other than Bal this is Bald Bolt 2, and he has this weird property where the only way that you can knock him down is if you hit him with a star punch. Like if, you, or if you're just hitting him in the face without a star punch and his health goes to zero, it immediately fills back up partway. So I don't know why they made him like that. They did. So I guess they I, force you to use stars, right? They're, they're they're forcing you to incorporate more of the game. Yeah, you're, you're they're they're saying you know if you don't know how to use star punches at this point, then you're essentially going to lose. So you better figure it out. Yeah, but I mean, is it is it easy to say that you wouldn't know how to use stars at this point? Like like to be at this point, would you need to already know how to use stars? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Right, you that's what I mean. I mean, if you already theoretically you could beat everyone up to this point without a star punch but it, it, nobody would do that probably yeah all right well I, I mean i guess we'll just hop to hop to this battle so this one's yeah. just uh pay attention um is there a set yeah, pattern you know exactly everything that's going to happen in this battle his pattern is the same thing every time except he can i'm going to be hitting him in the face and he's going to block it and retaliate and every time i do that there's like a 25 percent chance that he doesn't retaliate so i need to hit him again in the face um, and that, that wastes like a second and a half. It's not a huge deal. Yeah, you just got to be on first... your toes, right? Like, the better you are, yeah. the better chance you're going to have. And the first two punches of this fight, you have a three-frame window to hit them. And it's not that hard to hit, but if you're overthinking it, it's very easy to mess one of them up. And if you mess it up, then you're run. You're either losing five seconds if you're lucky, or if you're unlucky, then he's just going to, like, throw a punch into your face, and your run's going to be dead. Yeah. But you're a good player. You're a super player. So I was, I was focusing to... pretty hard at this point, so I was hoping <laughs> right. I wouldn't mess them up. All right. Well, three, two, one, go. Here we go. This guy doesn't have too much swag with him. He's Just jumping not... right into it. Yeah. So these are the first two three-frame punches. I got both of them. Nice. And Here's you're nervous, me... too, so this is more impressive. Yeah. Um this whole fight it revolves around getting stars and using them so there's not other than those first three frame punches though there's not too much execution wise i need to worry about yeah so it's, it's like you can just kind of relax a bit after the craziness that was soda Bobinski and the fights right before him so the last hit to drain itself doesn't have to be a star punch but you have to at least star punch him once no it does have to be a star punch. the only punch that matters is the punch that knocked him down that has to be a star punch. okay so right there and in order for that, you would have to know how much damage your star punches are doing as well. If you uh -huh. use your last star, but he's just got a little bit of health, you uh -huh. need to punch him to get a star. Then he's going to refill and then try again. And when we mapped this out years ago, exactly how much damage the star punches deal and like what punches you need to do when. In this fight, you're doing the exact same punch or sequence every time the whole way through to do it. Cool. There you go. So I did get blocked randomly in phase one or phase two, and I didn't point it out. He didn't retaliate one time there in phase yeah. two, so that's why. I so one thirty, yeah. So you lose a little bit of time here, but you're going up against a one twenty eight. I mean, that's that's pretty good, right? Yeah. A one twenty eight. That's like one of yeah. the best. Yeah, one twenty eight. You're not gonna get much better than one twenty eight because unless you, you could do like stupid risks, but I probably won't get into that because they're kind of complicated. Yeah. All right. So. So I've left a little bit of time there. Now we're only about six. Hold on, seconds hold, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Your phone is doing the, the the blocky pitch thing. Did you move it or something? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like last time, I will. So we have explained it. So we will. We we're gonna watch the fight now. Okay. So we will. Uh, I, have, I haven't even like explained anything about it yet. Oh yeah, that's right. You tried. You tried to. Okay. The f the floor is yours, good sir. So, I've mentioned before, uh, assuming you execute perfectly, your time in this fight can vary from somewhere in between a minute and 18 seconds to about two minutes. Mm -hmm. And okay. that is because of a few different factors. And the main one is in phase one, there's these things called random stars, okay? Every, like, seven punches or so, you're guaranteed to get a star punch on the Onkameko 2. But every other punch in the phase you have a 1 16th chance of getting a star. 
Of course. It's 1 in 16. It's very unlikely, but it is possible. And you have 9... There's 9 times that you hit him in the gut in Phase 1 where you have a chance of getting a random star. So, if you exit the phase with 0 stars, your time's going to be like 140 plus. If you get 1 star, your time's going to probably be like in the upper 130s, so mid 130s. If you get 2 or more stars, that's where it starts to get kind of crazy. But uh, after phase one, you can either get up with a big refill, a mid refill, or a low refill. And then in phase three, he can randomly block your punches. And you obviously um, want a, a you obviously want a small refill, right? Of course. Correct. A small refill is ideal, but the smallest refill there's only a one in eight chance of getting that. The mid refill is a three in eight chance, and the big refill is a four in eight chance. So odds are not in your favor. No. Jeez. And at this um, point. With the way now, I've developed a, a relationship with RNG. There's there's okay. an unspoken relationship that I have with RNG, and there's there's always that mindset that I have. I've gotten so lucky this far. I think it's impossible to get any more lucky. Like, are you thinking to yourself, mm -hmm. just kind of get through this? Do you think you're gonna get lucky in this battle? So I am thinking right now, if I can get anywhere even close to that 134 in the splits, then that's huge. Because a 134, or like a 135 or below, that's in like the top 20% of RNG. Plus you're not losing percent. time either. Right, right. So I'm, if I'm here, if I'm like, I would love to get in the top 20% of RNG right here on this fight and not to lose any time. Um, but even if I do lose a few seconds, I can continue the run and still have a chance for a really decent world record here. Yeah, well, I mean, um, all you need to do is 3.1, three right? Like, you just gotta get a little bit right. Well, I know it doesn't work in just simple point ones like that, but you know what I mean, right? Like, you just have yeah, to beat yeah. it by a little bit, so mm -hmm. very exciting. And I'm, I'm gonna spoil something that happens on the first punch of this fight. I mess up the first punch in the fight and I get blocked. And what that meant was that if I didn't get any random stars at all after that, the run was automatically dead. No, really? Yeah, but uh, you'll 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 see some some good stuff happened after that. Oh my gosh! So so the screw up on the first punch that was that just strictly your fault? You screwed up, yes. and then that that yep. caused well, we don't know if it directly caused the block, but a block had happened after it you does screwed cause up. The block. Oh my gosh! It, it so you the block. so you frigged up. Yeah, big that's okay. Frig up. It's okay. We're yeah. not perfect. So after okay. that, you're going to see some stars. Some of them are guaranteed stars that you'll always get, and some of them are random, and I'll let you know which ones are random as they come out. So. Yeah, do you want to hold our hand and walk us through this battle a little bit as you go? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll like play-by-play play kind of. What's sure, going on. sure. Okay. So in, in the video right now, I'm actually at 1331 if you want to have it that's perfectly. That's exactly where I'm at. <laughs> Obviously, that's how we roll, man. Okay, three, Speed runners. two, one, go. There's the little dance. Better not screw Every us time. over. There it is, that uppercut. So, it's probably, right now, I was overthinking this fight because I was too focused on getting random stars and check out this punch block. But that star is guaranteed. That one is random. So I'm like, awesome, I got a random star. Wow, this is good. That one's guaranteed. And that star and that star were both random stars. Oh my gosh. I got three 1 in 16 chances in the same phase. Oh, man. I got three stars. I'm thinking, just don't give me the big refill right here, and this fight's going to be in the 120s. So he gets up. He gives me the middle refill. Okay. So I'm doing the correct pattern here. I'm hitting him three times in the face like that, and then hitting him in the face again with the left punch. He goes down at 111. I got two stars to use, and there's this magic little combination that you can use in phase three when you have two stars. You buffer start, then two gut punches, and then you dodge and use a star. 126. I gained eight seconds. Oh my god! <laughs> That's insane! Even mm -hmm. messing up to... Do you think if you didn't mess up, you'd, your your RNG would have changed? Oh yeah, the, the, the luck in getting a 126, it's like 150. So if I messed up, if I didn't mess up that first punch i probably would have this fight would have probably been like at least 10 or 15 seconds slower right a lot of people ask me that when i when i on my pb when i got like three cards or i did i got the wall jump in the last air force mm -hmm. and i didn't get the wand yeah. grab you know i think you've been there uh -huh. they say 
they say if you didn't get the wand grab like do you think you would have beat the record and and most of the time i say is like everything that happened is what caused me to get no hands exactly right so yeah oh this guy we have not seen this guy before he does not look mr. happy sandman. mr sandman some people say when they're casually playing this game that mr sandman is actually harder than mike tyson i don't think that's true at all i think that's just because when you play this game with input delay um mr sandman's really hard but uh Oh, yeah, you, you, like, think that input delay doesn't matter much for Mario, right? Like, you've said that mm. before, I think. That's only because I've I've transferred from CRT, NES, the Wii, flat screen, emulator, and computer monitor. Mm -hmm. I've done it all. For yeah. Punch-Out, I can guarantee, though, that input delay matters because you need to react fast to what these guys are doing. So mm -hmm. if there's any delay, it's uh, you can't really speedrun this game at a high level without the uh, CRT. When it comes to when it comes to delay, the the fighting game aspect of the of the delay doesn't properly debunk my theory. You know what I mean? So it's like mm -hmm. um, with fighting games, I can't really comment or speculate, but I assume it does have some kind of difference. I'm not speaking in terms of a fighting game, but to think of the reaction as well is is uh, I wouldn't even I wouldn't want to test it. I would probably CRT if it comes to fighting games. Pretty the, much like what you said. There's like, people uh... like. You know, the Donkey Kong, former record holder, Wes Copeland, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you heard of him or not, but he was trying to play through this game on stream, like, a couple months ago, and he's just, he started doing it on emulator, and he's like, this game's impossible, how do you even beat this? How do you beat Mike Tyson? And then he switched to uh, CRT plus the console, and he beat Mike Tyson, like, after an hour of trying, so. <laughs> there you go, it's yeah. Huge. Yep. So, uh, this fight you're about to see right here, Mr. Sandman. You press select before the fight starts, like when that that cut screen with the black background, um, you got Doc Lewis, Little Mac, and Mr. Sandman. You press select, and that means that Little Mac's health is going to go to half um, right before the fight starts. And you're going to think that's probably kind of weird. Like, why would you want your health to go to half? Yeah, and first but, of all, why would that make your health go to half as well? It's just an Easter egg that they put into the game. Okay. If you do it in between rounds, your health goes up. But if you do it before the fight starts, it goes down to half silly but okay mm -hmm. and i'm gonna get hit a couple times intentionally here in phase one and i'm gonna kind of explain this is why i'm kind of gonna do a bit of a play-by-play -play with because i think it's the only way to do it because it's so long so i'm ready to go when you are sure apparently you can beat this boss in 47 73 i uh, don't know what ted 58 is talking about there <laughs> <laughs> okay. Beat this game without using a controller, just by mind. Okay. Oh my God. Three, two, okay. one, go. Your so, health, no. There it goes. It looks scary, and he, he does those big uppercuts. So, you, you'll see that that will come into play later. Those big uppercuts. But at the start of the fight, he does rolling jabs. You, I'm throwing his guard up here. Like you see how his hands are like right next to his face. That's because I'm holding up on the controller. Yeah. That's so I can hit him in the gut. So I do that five times, and I let him hit me intentionally right there. Then I do four more of those rolling jab gut punches. That's three, and that's four. I get hit one more time, and now his pattern switches. So I'm forcing him to throw punches at me now, and then I'm hitting him after. And that quick dodge, I'm delaying the punch by the exact right amount of frames so that the punch does more damage. Just a little another thing they programmed into the game where oh if you delay gosh. that punch it does more damage That's he goes insane. down at 117 i have almost no health he's gonna get up with like completely full health it's gonna look it's gonna look bad but uh thankfully i get a couple more of those punch those little punch combos in there and then at 130 those big uppercuts are gonna come out there they go and check out how much i'm able to damage him after that okay his health just immediately, I can hit him 18 times. His health drops all the way down. 156 second knockdown. He's going to get up. He can give me either a low or a big refill here. So 75% chance looking to the low refill. I get knocked down intentionally at 159 exactly. If you get knocked down at 159 or later, then he's going to do the triple uppercut pattern again. So there Which he goes. Opens he right there. And you can hit him a ton of times after that, and he goes down. And if you don't get knocked down, then he does not do that pattern again. He only does it if you get knocked down. He goes down at 220. He also like didn't delay at all before he did the triple uppercuts, which made that fight faster. It could, the did you seriously just save six splits. seconds? That's because of the delay that he could do before the Dreamland Express. Um, he could delay for like up to six seconds. And uh, so I got six more seconds back. 
This is insane, dude. Your time is insane I, right now. So after that Dawn 2 fight, I was literally thinking, just don't give me the worst luck possible for Mr. Sandman. And instead, he gave me the best luck you could possibly get. And I got six seconds back. Okay, so... If you get, if right... you get bad luck there, your time can be like 2.35. Oh my gosh, really? So you could have lost a lot of time. Big time, yeah. So... In this run right now, are you thinking to yourself, all right, so this run's kind of like almost unbeatable because of how lucky I'm getting? I, I'm thinking I don't care how long I play this game. I'm never going to see a run on as good of a pace as this is. So I need th I, I need to finish this. I don't have a choice. This needs to be some sort of world record or else like... You just wasted so do. much RNG. Yeah, exactly. You're not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get like a forty hippo plus a one oh two bull one plus a fifty one soda and a one twenty six on two and a two twenty sand man all in a row like that. It's not gonna happen. There's no way. I'm too nervous for you right now. So uh, Super Macho Man, he's actually a lot faster than most of the fights that came before him. Uh, that's because there's a lot of guard manipulation, you can get a lot of stars, you use all of your stars, and uh, he hardly throws any punches at you. So here, he can also give you a bad pattern, which means you'll get a time like 110 or 111 if you get a bad pattern instead what? of 101. And if you get a good pattern, I can potentially gain even more time against this 101. But I would yeah. need to get, you know, everything would have to go right. But What if, are the odds of these good patterns, do you think? Or do you the know? The good pattern, I think, is like 5 and 8. So the odds were in my favor of getting a good pattern, but there was still... A pretty solid chance that I'm gonna lose big time right here. Yeah. All but right. Thankfully, I could afford it because I'm half a minute ahead. So. <laughs> That's so much time. A sub yeah. 15 minute. You were probably yeah, crap in your pants, right? I, I always thought, you know, sub 15, like, oh yeah, I guess that's theoretically possible. It's like a sub 50. I don't know, any percent worthless. But yeah, I, exactly. It, this was seeming like, geez, this, maybe it's not that unrealistic. All right. Well, I, I can't wait any longer. Three. Two, right, go. one, go. His oh, little the dance peck. Right before. Yeah. yeah, it's a little peck dance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the key to this fight, seeing if you get the good or the bad pattern, it's whether or not he does a hook or an uppercut on a particular punch. And I'll tell you when that punch is. It's this punch right here. That punch right there. If that's an uppercut, that means you get the good pattern. If it's not, that means you get the bad pattern. And I got an uppercut, so that was the good pattern. So you're happy right now. You're like, yes, okay. He's he's like, I got three stars, and he's down at 33 seconds. So very, very good shape. Um, There's, like, too much going on in these phase two and phase three for me to explain it all. But he does that thing where he, like, spins around a bunch. He has a little and, tornado. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what the real name is. It's Spin Sucker or whatever the hell. Anyway, you you, th you throw a star punch after he does that a certain amount of times. It can either be like between three and eight times. It, the, the time doesn't move when he's doing them, though, so it doesn't matter. Oh, and, that's uh, cool. Okay. <gasps> the good pattern meant that I gained uh, six more seconds. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It, it was... It, like, I felt like it wasn't... Like, I, I know it sounds cliche. You're, like, stopping in time right now. Yeah, I'm, like... I don't even know like how to describe it without making it sound like really dumb, like what I was feeling. <laughs> so, <laughs> thirty-six seconds ahead. Um, I, that meant I could get. In order to beat the fifteen thirty-four, that meant that I needed a two forty-nine. In order to get world record, I needed like two forty-six on Tyson. That's completely free to get at the end of a run, pretty much. But uh, really quickly, I need to explain how the Tyson fight works. Of course, of course. So. Um, Mike Tyson, beating him in round one means that you need to hit as many frame-perfect punches as you can, all right? Um, you have a 60th of a second to time them. He's going to throw uppercuts. You hit him twice after each uppercut. The first one, you just hit him as soon as you can. The second punch, you delay it to the last 60th of a second before he would block it. If uh, if you do that, then the punch deals more damage than normal, and like a, a chunk of his health bar comes off instead of just a tiny bit. And that's normal in the game, right? That's not any kind of manipulation or anything. That's right. Okay. They programmed it in, but uh, I don't know if they really expected people to do it on purpose or not, because it's a sixth of a second to time it. Like I don't know if you'd accidentally do that, but you need to do that over and over again for the first one thirty of the fight. 
And after that, he switches to hooks. And the hooks, you have frame perfect stuff too. If you if you wait to counter his hook to the last 60th of a second before he would block it, then it deals five damage instead of uh, four damage. So that is the execution. I need to hit I over a dozen frame perfect punches here in like 20 something opportunities to get world record. And there's also a lot of randomness in this fight. There's uh, the eight second delay which actually ends up wasting more than 8 seconds, but it's where Tyson stands still for 8 seconds in the middle of Phase 1. There's a 50-50 shot of him doing that or not. If he does that, then the time is probably going to be closer to like 2.40 or 2.50. So if he does that, I'm in bad shape. Um, he could also randomly delay for shorter lengths of time in other places, and uh, if he does a bunch of those, then it's bad news for me, because you want him to throw as many uppercuts as possible, and he stops throwing uppercuts in a minute 30, so the faster you knock him down the first time, then he'll throw more uppercuts in phase 2, and you can deal more damage from those uppercuts, so you just want him to get him down as fast as you can for the first, first So a phase, lot of this fight much. revolves around round 1. Yeah, fa phase 1 is, like, the most important part of the fight, I guess. Yeah. And it's, all, all you're thinking about is just hit frame perfect. Gosh, um, that's also, stressful. I should mention the, the 213 in my splits. Uh, the world record on Tyson at this time was like 207, 206. Um, so I wasn't expecting to get anything near a 213 um, because I would need to hit like 20 frame perfect hits and get like a super good pattern for that to happen. So I'm just, yeah, I just want to get, you know, something decent on Tyson. So I'm looking yeah. for here. All right, are we ready, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, I'm nervous. That's why I'm like stretching. I can't. Oh my gosh. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, Tyson. All right. Here we go. Also, I'm the type of person whose hand shakes when they get nervous. Like I, my hands just start shaking, so it was hard to like grip the controller to do these punches. But mm -hmm. uh, out of the gate here, I hit the first four frame perfect punches and then the fifth one i got blocked and then that that punch they did right there meant that i didn't get the eight second delay so that was huge um and i actually hit every frame perfect hit in that phase of so 102 and that's, that's good uh, you're like oh my gosh okay fantastic. okay that's, that that like guaranteed that this would be record but by how much i didn't know um phase two right here I hit the first two, hit the third one, the fourth one, and got the fifth one. And then here's the frame perfect hooks. I missed the hook, but he was down on two. And then all that was left in this run was phase three. I was just as many of these frame perfect hits as I could get to lower the time. So I hit one, missed one, hit it, hit it. If I hit him once, that means I hit it. If I hit him twice, then missed it mm -hmm. and 227 but you can potentially get a 206 theoretically yeah you can get 206 so <sighs> you're, you're probably looking at this and being like oh what choke on tyson 14 seconds that's that's rough you know that means you could beat this by a lot if you just play better at the end and you know my answer is yeah you can but I, I ended up hitting 20 frame perfect punches in that fight um, versus the same. I think I hit, I think I also hit 20 in that 213. But the yeah. reason it was so much slower is because the one that I missed in phase one ended up making the fight like 10 seconds slower because that meant that he threw one less uppercut in phase two, which meant that I couldn't deal as much damage to him in phase two. And uh, yeah, it, it, it hurt. That's insane, though. That's insane, though. But, I mean, with how lucky you got in the previous run, like, how ideal is, like, you're, you're, you're speed running this still, right? Yeah, I am. So how ideal is this run to beat, do you think? Well, um, I will say this. At the time, I thought that I would never beat this. I thought that someone else probably would eventually, just whoever was willing to put in the, you know, whatever crazy amount of attempts it would take to get the luck needed for it. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, I didn't do any, you know, special crazy execution that was way above any this run. I just, I played the way I was supposed to play, and the game gave me gave me the luck. But, because uh, the second best run at that point that I had ever done was 
or no, sorry, the that, this run was fifteen twelve, the second best run I'd ever done, fifteen thirty one. So it was way ahead of anything else I'd ever done. But since then, I've gotten some other times in the fifteen twenties, and just last night I got a fifteen seventeen with a two ten Tyson at the end. So oh my gosh, this, so that... I think I am gonna beat this eventually. Well, you got a, You just said you got a fifteen fifteen. You said seventeen. Yeah. So you got some pretty good luck, but you got a much better Tyson. So right. You saved a good chunk of time on Tyson, but you didn't get as lucky throughout the run. Right. I. Uh, I. I'm. You're, you're always going to be behind going into Tyson against this run, and what it comes down to is just can you get that you know crazy Tyson fight at the end or, or not. That sucks. I hate those. I hate those red splits, like when I had the early yeah. hammer run. It's just red until the end, right? Until you yeah, get, like... pretty much. It's... For me as a runner... Sorry, hold on. Sir. For me as a runner, I know the difference, and I know I've run it for so long, so I know that the red isn't as bad as it seems, but it just the color and just the sight, it sucks having to deal with all the time. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not the end of the it's, world, but... It's demoralizing. It, yeah. But at the same time, it can be exciting. When when I when I used to go into World Eight at like plus two seconds red, it's like oh my gosh, like this run is crazy. But the average person would be like, well, you're doing crappy. You're in the plus. Like, yeah. what's going on? But you know, you know deep down inside. Yeah, you know. it, it's I'm I'm always like between ten and fifteen seconds behind if I ever get a shot at making it to Tyson, and it looks like it's a dead run, but uh, I can potentially still get it. Yeah. Do you find you reset heavier? Because of the um, red? No, I'm I'm pretty much keeping the same parameter. I'm I'm still taking anything under fifteen hippo. We have a new Honda one strat now with a forty point forty nine point nine seven where if I, I have to reset on him a bit more often, but if I make it past him I'm usually gaining like five seconds there, which is pretty huge. That is pretty huge. Well, aside aside from all of that, man, that was that was insane. But I wanna I wanna ask more about like what it is, I'm I'm gonna guess here. AGDQ, right? You stumbled upon AGDQ to uh, get it, to get into speedrunning. You know, I actually don't quite remember. Like, I I found out like about watching speedrunners on Twitch around the time AGDQ 2014 happened, but I think it was actually a little before AGDQ that I found it, and then AGDQ just like helped with that. Yeah, AGDQ is really big with the mm -hmm. the speedrunning thing, but yeah. So I mean, why 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 speedrunning? Why, um, why the stress about it? I mean, what is it that you like about it? I mean, I mean, well, first question, just just in general, like, why speedrunning? Like, what is it about it that makes you be like, yeah, I want to be a speedrunner? Um, it's it's tough to like pinpoint a reason. It's 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 just when you have something that you've worked on for so long and you're trying to beat it, and the feeling of knowing that you know, there's not many people in the world who can do this. You're only like one of the few people who can get a time this low. It, it's like, it's really motivating. Like it motivates yourself to like push harder to get it and know that the feeling's going to be so good when it finally happens. Yeah. I mean, of course, if it happens is always right. If it that's happens. there in the back of the head, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, well, in that case, why Mike Tyson's Punch-Out? Did you play this game a lot as a kid? Uh, not much. Like, I had, I had, I hardly had any experience with the game at all before I watched uh, Sinister 1 play it. Because I used to watch, Sinister used to stream this game, like, every couple of nights. He would do world record attempts. And back then, this is, like, early 2014, mm -hmm. the record was, like, 1636. And I remember him, you know, he'd get to Tyson, and... It, I remember just always like being so captivated by his runs because there was so much that could go wrong. Like he could just get bad luck and in a certain place, and it would completely kill the run. Or he could, you know, bust out a crazy Tyson fight at the end to save it. And it, it just, I loved it, man. I don't know why. I don't know. It's exciting. Like that for any other game. Yeah. It's exciting, man. So, did you ever think that you would be the world record holder in this game in 2014 when you used to watch Sinister? No, I, 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 I didn't. I couldn't even beat like. Piston Honda Two back then. So, so what was what was I, I, the I turning no point for you? Did you tell yourself, well, "Listen, I want to get really good," or did you just casually keep playing and you got better and better, and then you're like, "You know what? Why don't I throw up a timer or something?" And and did you start tracking your times or? 
it, it all happened by accident because like I watched Sinister One so much that I started to casually play the game a bit and then I'm like you know, I bet I can do what he does on Glass Joe. And then I'd go, you know, I bet I can do what he does on Von Kaiser. And I'd practice it a bit and I'd get it. And I kind of just went like that for random fights in the game. And, and after, like, a few months of this, I realized, you know, there's only a couple of fights I don't know how to speedrun. Why don't I just try learning this whole game? Just, it, it could be, like, I, I kind of did speedruns of Mario 1 before them, but not seriously. So this could be, like, my first serious speedrun game. Sure. So I just I started practicing the fights that I didn't know how to do. And uh, it all just sort of came together. And I didn't have any thought of getting anything near a world record for a very long time. Yeah. That's that's really cool, though. That, that's enticing because your mindset doesn't doesn't truly represent what you've achieved obviously mm -hmm. through time right i mean a mindset right. of 2014 compared to your mindset right now it's different you know you can get this record you know you can beat the time now it's time to grind but when you have no idea that you can achieve any kind of goal or world record from what you're watching like what you're influenced by that's what shows like the true like dedication how much work and how important it is to someone right and that's right always inspiring that's that's such a cool way to process i mean i had no idea my main goal was just to be published on speed demos archive that's where it yeah. all started for me that's all i cared about i was like these guys are awesome i want to be a part of this community and i don't think i can be a part of this community until i submit a run and i'm on there and then it just kind of turned into this whole thing and then streaming and then all this stuff went crazy yeah. my main goal it, was never to have records in mario 3 are you kidding me i didn't even yeah, think about that it's, just, it's the same thing here like when i my first, you know, speedrunning thing that I ever did was just a little bit of casual Mario 1 speedrunning. Because back in the day, early 2014, there were three speedrun streamers that I watched. I didn't even have a Twitch account. I just, like, checked on these three channels every week because I didn't even think to make an account. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Andrew G1990 for Mario 1. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, picked up, I picked up running that game. Sinister 1 for Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I picked up running that game. And this guy named Mitch Flower Power for Super Mario Bros. 3, any percent worthless. That's right. I, yeah, I watched. I remember uh, your fifty-one fifty-four. I remember watching that live. And, uh, oh, the fifty-one fifty-four. Fifty-one fifty-four. Yeah, it's yeah. classic. But someday maybe I'll pick up any percent worthless. We'll see. <laughs> Just don't be scared of it, please. Yeah. Lots I'll of people are running it right now. Yeah. Darby and I know he just got back into it. Yeah, Darby and Calco. So. There's a couple other people. I mean, there's yeah, a lot of people are running. It's, it's fun, man. You like Mario Three is fun in a whole other level. I think when it when it compares to other Mario speedruns, especially comparing it to Mario One. I don't think that's a fair comparison, but mm -hmm. with how fun Mario Three is. And, like, if you could just speedrun that game and enter it without the mindset of RNG and be like, how good can I get at these worlds together? Like, this world together. Or how good can I get at these individual levels? That is just so much fun. Yeah, for sure. That's that's what I think drives most people to start speedrunning. It's just, like, how fast can I do this little part? And then they kind of just all get pieced together. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, uh, do you have any advice for um, little little tiny speedrunners in the, in the darkness right that nobody's ever heard of nobody knows that are in the shadows right now ready to rise rise against us do you have any advice for for them for speedrunning or or anyone who gets you know discouraged any any kind of advice to help them keep their spirits lifted yeah i see people all the time who are like you know i would run this game but the world record is you know a super low time so i'm probably never gonna run it you have to like keep in mind like this is kind of what we were just saying before but like you don't need to just go for world record when you do speed runs like i didn't start punch out going for world record i didn't start any of my games going for world record i just did them for fun so don't be discouraged by like a super low world record because that means nothing like you you shouldn't speed run just because you want to get world records it's not going to be fun if you do that mm -hmm. well like the, the first time the first time you see yourself not doing what they do in the run, that's super discouraging. But I find mm -hmm. only discouraging when you're trying. Like, you're so ill-experienced and you're trying to be just as good as them, like, super fast. Like, you need to take the time and kind of just, yeah. you know, sure. that's essentially what you're saying, right? You need to... Yeah, just, you know, go at your own pace. You don't need to try to match up with the top. 
point. You know, eventually, if you want to, then obviously, yeah. But you, you, you don't need to set your goals that high right away. Just try to have fun with it. Yeah. Now, do you think it's wrong to enter speedrunning with the mindset of, like, I'm not entirely looking for fun. I want to be as good as I can possibly be. Like, do you think that's, no, that's a bad mindset? No, that's a perfectly fine mindset as long as you don't let it discourage you, you know? Like, if you're not seeing results right away, that shouldn't discourage you. That should, you know, encourage you to try to push it farther. Yeah. I, I, I don't like seeing people who are just not having fun in general. Yes, right that's like it's it's just they they want an outcome and i like just by watching them you know like dude you're, you're gonna have to play for a long time like you should really go back to the drawing board and kind of take it easy to see those better mm -hmm. results so yeah. i think um a lot of times when it comes to speed running you really have to analyze who you are as a person and, and what it is you're actually like your main goal and see if what you're doing is the ideal process of getting that goal yeah, I think that's. I agree, like hundred percent. I think that's some some pretty good stuff, and and I don't know if you how much you've fully watched me in the past, but I've also gone through very like I've gone through a lot of transitions personally oh, yeah. as a person, speed running, you know, pros and cons, and doing a lot of self evaluation. I think that's really good too, because that big Mario Maker phase, I remember that. Yeah, I went through I went through Mario Maker, like I stopped Mario three, but I I used to be more destructive when it came to Mario 3, because, I don't know, oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I feel like I might have been more, like, in a rush, but now as I'm older, getting older, I'm realizing, like, you know, it, it's not healthy to be that way and stuff like that, so it's, mm -hmm. it's better to, like, I'll still get mad, sure, but, I mean, not anywhere near as what it was before, so. It's, it's the same with me, too, honestly. Like, when, once you lose more runs, you just kind of get, like, you just realize it's not worth getting three over yeah yeah i mean for me with with twitch being like the primary thing for me completing a run or completing a goal leads for opportunity like mm -hmm. i've i've been wanting to like play kamikaze bros or maybe speed run it but i can't because i'm so bound by this one game the longer i don't play mario 3 right the 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 worse i yeah. feel like i'm gonna get at it so it's mm -hmm. um yeah so some runs are more important than other but when it comes to uh, a 15 12 here oh my gosh the rng was just insane dude I, i'm still trying to beat it but uh and I, I'd, I'd love to beat this run it would be great a personal goal for me because it's it stood for like two years and i never thought i would beat it but, uh, this yeah, run this it. runs two years old yeah just under two years old wow i did not know insane yeah and that not like not many people have really put in serious attempts of the game since like to to try to beat the world record other than me like the second place is like 1549 by uh, Zallard but if he put in the time he could get very close to this run or beat it yeah definitely it, it just anyone though it would take a while just because of the luck that you need agreed so um with that being said do you have do you have anything else to um tell anyone about about your speed running or, or or how it came to be like do you have do you have speed runs in the future uh i i don't i'm like therapy and where i don't like to make plans because if i try i just end up going back on them or uh you know changing my mind so i i uh i just for punch out for sure i'm gonna do more punch out and then after that we'll see cool cool right on well of course everyone needs to know your favorite pizza stopping apparently that's turning into like some crazy thing do you like pizza of course of course everyone likes pizza who doesn't like who doesn't pizza man. right are you like Even me doesn't like pizza probably are you like me are you like are you fine with a pepperoni and cheese pizza like i don't absolutely right 100%. i don't care if there's any top if there's topping on it sure i, I don't mind but you know pepperoni there's, there's a few toppings that i don't really like but other than that like i'm whatever's whatever it's, it's fine if we're going to talk about what we don't like for me I don't want mushrooms on my pizza. Same. I don't Same want olives me. on my pizza. And I certainly don't want anchovies on my pizza. For me, it's more uh, mushrooms. And then people, some people put like peppers on their pizza. Like, no, no, that's not good. Yeah, green peppers or banana peppers or... I don't like onion on my pizza. That's actually another one. I don't... Yeah, I, I, don't... I don't... I'm not a huge onion fan either. But yeah. I, I don't think I've ever had onion on a pizza, so... Okay, so, like I said before, on an island gun to your head asteroid coming to the planet the only thing that can save all of those things get you off the island not get shot and the world is saved 
what is the one topping that will save them all? Uh, does pepperoni count as a topping? Is that... to, to me, it does. When, it, okay. when people say, what's your favorite pizza, Mitch? I say pepperoni and cheese. So I'm down. Yep. Let's yes. do it. Pepperoni. Right on. Planet saved gun deloaded. If I don't even know what. <laughs> deload the gun. <laughs> deload, take the bullets out of the magazine. <laughs> All right. Well, with that being said, I had a lot of fun, man. And thanks. Thanks for yeah, coming this on. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I'm happy to always happy to talk about Shout. No problem, man. I now I un. If I pop a new Mike Tyson punch out, I'll be like, dude, you didn't even get first frame Tyson there. Like, I'll know what I'm talking about. Where's the 51 soda? Come right. Let's let's go, dude. Come on now, Glass Joe. You didn't get that. You didn't get the 41 point whatever pal version. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did someone say during the run? They got a they got a 48 on uh, on uh, that one guy that was like a minute and 30. Uh, yeah. 47 <laughs> something for same man. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. I All don't right. Think so. Well, either way, I will catch up with you later on, maybe tonight oh, or, cool. or throughout the week. So, yeah, thanks yeah, for coming I'll on. I'll be watching your stream, so. There we go. See you then. <laughs> All right, man, take it easy. Have yourself a you uh, good night. Man, you too. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. All right. Did you guys?